Lessons with Bobbles. Fuck! Hey, what's going on? Welcome to a very, very special edition of Guitar Lessons with Bubbles today, the Hendrix episode. Clearly it's the Hendrix episode because I look exactly like him. Dressed up, I got the clothes here. And I've got a very special guest today, Clifton David Broadbridge. Fucking unbelievable guitar player and he, he is like the Hendrix expert, like the biggest Hendrix expert I know. So he agreed to, you know, show us some Hendrix stuff thanks today. Thanks for having me on, man. Yeah, thanks for being here. He plays Hendrix stuff all over the US. This is gonna be awesome. So I was thinking, I've always been trying to play fucking Purple Haze. Okay. And I just, I don't know why, but I just can't get it right. It always sounds, you know, it doesn't sound hazy enough. Yeah, I, you, I think I understand that. Can you show, here's, the, here's how much I got of it. I can All go. Right. Oh, just wait. I'm gonna turn on my thing here. Yeah. Turn your and I notice pedal you, on. Got a, you got all the fancy stuff, and I noticed you just gave me this one little well, one little thing here. I mean, that's kind of unfair, but... Well, you got the clothes, so... That's true. I do have all the excellent... You got the mojo. All the excellent... Yeah. Where did you get these clothes, anyway? Those are <laughs> fantastic. Thank you. So I can do this part. And then I, get, I start getting lost, so if you can just okay, well, walk got, me through it. We got the intro part right here on the 6th fret and the octave. Oh yeah, right, I forgot that part. Okay, so walk me through that just quickly. All right, so the intro? Or the I, know, I know the intro. Oh, okay, so so the intro is just the 6th fret octave thing. Here's go. So up to the ninth fret, and then bend, and then oh, yes. that's why I was fucking it up. I yep. see now. And then again. Part. Almost. So. Decent, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and then what? And then we have. Okay. Holy fuck, so I can pretty much play Purple Haze now. Now we play the verse. Yeah. E7 sharp 9. I can't oh, solo no. after that fucking thing. I mean, that was, you know, you're just gonna make me look like foolish, but. You'll sound great. No, give it a try. Jeez, I don't know if I can. Yeah, key of E. Okay.
not too bad. No, it wasn't bad. You know what, Bubbles? I think we could probably get this. I mean, this. I sound a lot like Jimmy, but. I think we could get a little, little closer, even. Closer sound? I think so. Hey, Eddie, can you come in here for a sec? Decent, okay. Well, fuck, if you can make me sound more like Jimmy, that'd be fantastic. I got my friend Eddie over here. He's going to help you out with some stuff. Hello. Hello, Lex. Came to help you with your sound, mate. That's Eddie Kramer. Hello. Holy fuck, what's going on? I didn't know. You didn't you <laughs> fail to mention to me you had Eddie Kramer at your house. <laughs> Eddie, hi there. Hey, nice doing? to meet you. Oh my nice God, that's you. Eddie Kramer. That's the man right there. Everything you've ever heard by Jimi Hendrix, that's who recorded it right there. Look, I'm freaking out. Look, I'm shaking like a fucking, some kind of a shaky thing. Here, why don't you plug into my, my stuff now? Eddie will help you out here. Yeah, you might next time you have a fucking living legend hanging around the house. Maybe mention that to me before we get into it. Ah! Decent. Sorry, Eddie. I just probably blew the fuck out of the amp there. That's all right. That's all right, mate. How are you doing? Do you want to sit down? Well, I think I'm going to have a little go at your pedals over here and see if I can give you some magic. You need a bit of magic. You need some magic. You know what I mean? Decent. Anything you want to do. Anything but that. Could you make me sound like Voodoo Child? No, but I'll make you sound halfway decent. Okay. All right, hang on, try a bit of this. Um, hold on a second. Kramer's fucking with my pedals right now. And I'm right. dressed up like this so much. Freaking out. All right, <laughs> give, us a, give that a shot. What should I play, same thing? Yeah, man. <laughs> Try this one. Yeah, turn there that off. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, great. I'm fucking the song up in front of Eddie Kramer. Fantastic. Way to go, Bubbles. Play some rhythm, man. He said, Spacey Crazy. Decent, that is amazing. <laughs> well, you know why it sounds better? Because these these new pedals that we got. It's the Eddie Kramer signature pedals, and they're modeled after Hendrix's sound. Try it again, man. It sounds bloody marvelous. Maybe, is there somewhere, uh, you know, maybe I could get one of those paddles to take home I might me. be able to give you one, mate. Just a like, bit like this, like this. Okay, play some more, man. Eddie Kramer fucking play edition pedals. <laughs> yeah, now I blew the man's ears out. <laughs> Excellent, way to go, Bubbles. <laughs> Try end, again. Try end again. of Eddie's career, probably. Try that again. <laughs> I might have the wrong settings going here, too. This is... Right. Keep going. Cool. Yeah. Oh, and he does a drummer now. Yes. Do you and know... a bass player. Maybe, do you know any of the drummers of the world? Uh, we could... Yeah, unfortunately, most of them are dead, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Eddie Kramer making jokes. Here, do you want to sit down? Yeah, Maybe man, let's chat. Could I ask you some stuff? Yeah, man. All right, decent. Where's Clifton at, hey? Hello, hey, Cliffy. Right. Come back in, have a seat. Have a seat, Cliffy. Be part of the thing. This is okay, so Guitar Lessons has now shifted. Fuck the lessons. I don't care about the lessons at this point. I'd like to talk to Eddie. I'm here. Decent, so. Why is he here? Like, he didn't even mention this to me. He likes Canada. He's in the neighborhood. <laughs> Fantastic. So, for people that don't know, there's probably maybe one person out there watching who doesn't know this is Eddie Kramer, legendary fucking producer, engineer. Just like, tell me, give me the, you know, the A list of who you work with. Watch this. Blow your mind. Jimi Hendrix, obviously. Yeah. Rolling Stones, uh, Beatles. <laughs> the Beatles. Led Zeppelin. Yeah. Uh, and there was this funny band called Kiss with a lot of makeup on. I love Kiss. I love Kiss. You worked, so he he worked with everybody. You worked with... Clapton. Uh, Clapton. The Kinks. The Kinks, yeah. Look, you, you know you've done a lot 
when you forget that you recorded all the kinks. Oh yeah, I did the kinks too. Forgot about that one. Woodstock. I mean, oh Woodstock. yeah, there was a crazy festival where everybody was stoned and everything like that. It was amazing. Three days of drugs in hell. <laughs> oh my God. So I just want to ask you, can I ask some stuff about Jimmy? Yeah, man. What was he like? <laughs> he was fabulous. He was a great guy. He was a gentleman. Was he? Yeah, very soft-spoken and actually was very funny. He used to make a lot of jokes. Jimmy, see, I didn't know that. I would not know that Jimmy was a funny guy. Yeah. Never would have known He that. would take the piss out of me and he would take the piss out of Noel and Mitch and himself. A lot of self-deprecating humor. Really, see, yeah. I, that's fascinating to me. Yeah. And how did you meet Jimmy? Like, what, when was the first time you ever met Jimmy? Met him at Olympic Studios in 1967 and he walked in the door and he had this very funky white raincoat on and he sat in the corner, didn't say anything and then the amps came in and he plugged in and I went, oh, how am I going to record that? <laughs> <laughs> but you managed to do it quite yeah, fucking well, quite well. I well, like he, he liked what I did and uh, gave me a big smile and he ran back out into the studio and plugged a couple of more pedals in and cranked it up some more, and he looked at me like, all right, see if you can top that. So I did some more twiddling and more and more and more twiddling, and then he came in and listened, he said, yeah, I like that. Amazing. And that started the relationship, yeah. Amazing, and then you were with him like you recorded. All of his albums, yeah. All of his albums, all of Jimi Hendrix's Everybody. albums, and now I'm sitting here dressed up like Jimmy, playing. This is fantastic. You're doing a pretty damn good job, my boy. Oh, thank you. I thought I looked. Yeah, I mean, look at all this stuff. It's lovely. Would Jimmy have liked that now? Would that I, have been something? Yeah, I mean, it's close, yeah. He it's might got, have wore that. It's got that. the turquoise bit on it. It's a nice bit of turquoise. Yeah, so where, where did Jimmy, like, where did Jimmy buy his clothes? Do you know where he bought us? Because he always had the cool, cool dads. There was this great store in Chelsea in London called Granny Takes a Trip. And that's where he bought all his clothes. And then because he did it, we always used to go over there and buy clothes. I had my little flower power shirt, and my beads, and my little funny beanie hat. Decent. Is it but he was, a, he was a fashion show every day. He dressed up to the nines. So he was actually wearing like old lady clothes. He was wearing old lady clothes, yeah. And all the old ladies used to look at him and say, you're wearing my clothes. No, they didn't, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's unbelievable. Now, you, you mentioned there earlier that you recorded the Beatles. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about that, what that was like? Scary. That was the scariest bloody moment of my life. Even though you had already recorded the Kinks and... and the Hendrix and the Stones, but the Beatles, it was like... It was still, when they came in, it was like, okay. Royalty, you know what I mean? Wow. So, do you want to hear a story? No, I think we're done. We're going to end it right there. No, I'm just joking. Of course I want to hear a fucking story. Can you imagine if I shut it down right there, right before the Beatles story? <laughs> I would love to hear a story. Do you Beatles. want to hear a story about how we recorded All You Need Is Love? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> so the Beatles come in and they're walking into the control room and John Lennon sits next to me at the board yeah. and he grabs acoustic guitar and he starts playing. He says, oh, lads, we've got to do this song for TV. And it goes like this, all you need is love. And he's strumming away and I'm thinking, how on earth am I going to record John Lennon sitting in the control room, sitting next to me, singing, when all the boys are walking out into the studio picking up various instruments. Right. So I thought, right, the talkback mic, which is right on the producer's desk, I wired that up so that he could sing at the producer's desk with his guitar to the boys in the studio with their headphones. And that's the way he recorded it? Yep. And so he counts it off. One, two, three, all you need is... And we start recording on one reel of tape, half an hour, right? Yeah. And we get to almost to the end. It's a half an hour. Straight through, no stopping. Get to the end of each take. Two, three, all you need is... Straight through, no stopping about 20 performances, back to back. Jesus and we get to the end of the reel and say, uh, do you want to hear some of these back? He says, yeah, wind back two from the end, please. So we wind back two, all the boys come in, George Martin, we listen to, hit the playback, listen to it back. That's great. Bye, see you later. 
And that was it. And that track went to EMI, and that's when they put the strings and the horns yeah, on. Yeah, uh, horn intro and stuff. Yeah. But he sang that in the booth with the or in the control room. Yeah. With the talk. Background. And did you know what kind of bass that jo that uh, Paul McCartney was playing? I would bet think... you you don't know. Well, I I would guess by that on that he was playing his Reckenbacher, but I wrong. Don't... He was playing a string bass, an upright. Oh, see, I didn't know that. And so did these you... are the kind of fucking things that freak me out. Like now, you know, people don't know that. Now they do. What was George Martin playing? On All You Need Is Love? Um, I don't know, did he play a horn? He wished. <laughs> no, he, he, he walked out in the studio, there was a harpsichord sitting there. He said, oh, throw a mic up, boink. He was playing a harpsichord. He played that? Yeah. My God. And you also recorded Baby You're a Rich Man. Yeah. In one night. Tracked it, overdubbed it, mixed it. Whole thing done. Whole thing done. Bing, oh, yeah, bang, that's, bang. you know, Beatles just, you know, rattle off a fucking <laughs> hit one night, done, mixed it. <laughs> Tell me something about, you know, recording that one, Baby, You're a Rich Man. Well, that's a secret. I'll, I'll save that for the book. Oh, yes, you're, you're writing a book. I'm trying. I heard that. Eddie Kramer writing a book by the fucking thing because it's probably as fascinating, you know, all those little kind of nuggets in the book there. Amazing. <laughs> I want to, oh yeah, that, that's something I always wanted to know about Jimmy. Like when you see Hendrix in some of those shots at Woodstock and stuff, it looks like he had like fucking hands of a giant. Were his hands as enormous as? His thumb came out to about there and he could bar the whole neck of the guitar with his thumb. Jesus. And that's how it was part of his sound. Yeah, cause he, you know, Jimmy, I'm sure you know that he was left-handed. You know that, right? Yep. Actually, he wrote right-handed, and he played the guitar left-handed. And he always... I didn't know. He he always, dexterous. But, he, but the funny thing is he always had a joint in his left hand, but he wrote right-handed. <laughs> so, yes, so that he's taken the most important thing with his left hand. <laughs> yes. And he's just, you know, secondary, his writing joint. Primary use of his appendage. <laughs> right? <laughs> Well, this is, I mean, this is just blowing my mind. Blowing my mind. I mean, I got a million things got, I want to. You've got to keep your hat on. Don't let your mind get blown. Because I think these are beautiful. You've got to show the, look, look, look at this lovely stuff. You think Jimmy might have rocked that if he, you know, yeah. would he have worn that hat? Yeah, he would have seriously rocked that hat. Oh, you know what I should have did? I should have fucking lied and told people this was Jimmy's real hat. <laughs> they might have believed it because it's, Theoretically possible that he might own one of Jimmy's hats. <laughs> Do you have any of like Jimmy's old stuff, his foot pedals or any of that? No, I wish I did, mate. Nothing of that stuff. I have his music. Love well, it. yeah, I mean, not that, not that it sucks. You don't have his pedal. You did record all the man's music. You so got a lot of pictures of him. Yeah, you you took a lot of. Is that going to be part of your book? The photographs are going to be part of the book. Yep. Unreleased Definitely. photos of Jimi Hendrix. Amazing. See, that sound, that's Jimmy coming back to say, watch it. <laughs> yeah, careful what pictures you put out. Don't put out that one you took me pissing that time. <laughs> Eddie's got a long history with Canada. He actually recorded the Rolling Stones here in 1977 at the Elma Combo. Yeah, 77, I was there with a truck at the side of the, of the back of the Elma Combo with a little bread truck and recorded the Stones. And Saw Margaret Trudeau walking through the hallways, you know? Yes, the famous story. Yes, I don't know much about that, but I did see her. She was there, yes. confirmed. But the, uh, the sound of that band in 77 was remarkably fabulous. Really, so you did that recording. Yeah, I noticed the well, Alma Combo yeah. sign here. Well, I read something about the Alma Combo is gonna get revamped, is that? It's being rebirthed as we speak. And are you part of that? Cliffy and I are doing it, yeah. Oh my God, can I maybe? Maybe I could be, you know, in there too, somehow. Well, you gotta come and play maybe one night with Cliffy. Do some Hendrix. Oh well, yeah, you heard it right there, that's happening. That is definitely happening. Make it happen. <laughs> I mean, we were, this was supposed to be guitar lessons with Bubbles, but I don't give a fuck anymore really about teaching, teaching uh, stuff. You know, so I'm, yeah, fuck that. Sorry about it, I'm gonna keep talking to him. You can noodle around yeah, over there. Yeah, you go right ahead. You, you noodle, noodle while around over there. Tell me, um, let me think of something that maybe some, something nobody's ever asked you before. If you're asking about my private life, 
piss off. No, no, I don't give... Well, I mean, I'm not going to say I don't give a fuck about it, but... You know, I'd like to ask you more about, you know, recording Jimmy and stuff. So on a typical day, recording Jimmy, you know, how would it go? Like, what time would you start? That's nice. Nice. That's beautiful. He's, he's good, isn't he? He's scoring our conversation. I love right it. Now. Like Rambo. Back scoring, yeah. One of my favorite songs of all time of Jimmy's. We recorded that in about, I don't know, half an hour. You recorded that song in half an hour? Yeah. Oh my God, that's one of my favorites too, Wind Cries Mary. And you know, know you know that words. beautiful, sounds like a bell? Yes. You know what that is? No, I do not. It's a glockenspiel. It is? Yeah, Jimmy played it. Decent. Yeah. Is that? Is that common knowledge, or did I just learn something? You just learned something. See that? <laughs> Inside. Ask me some more stuff. So 30 minutes to record The Wind yeah. Cries Mary. Typical night, you wanted to know what time you started? 7 o'clock. 7 p.m. Right in the studio, and then three hours we had maybe two or three songs. Bang. So just, you're recording obviously live off the floor for the... Absolutely live off the floor. But that was in the beginning. That's in 1967 at Olympic. As things progressed into 68 in America, things got a little bit looser. Yeah. And then we started to make all night sessions, right? So starting at seven, finishing at five in the morning. Right. And then things got even more loose because then Jimmy wouldn't show up till midnight because he was jamming around the corner at the scene club, playing bass upside down. Then you drag 25 people, more, like all of us in here, back to the control room at the record plant in New York City and be playing that. Oh my God. So like you didn't, I mean obviously, you didn't just record the man, like you guys hung out. You guys hung out and went to clubs. And... Yeah, a little bit. Decent. So 7 p.m. starts. Sometimes we didn't finish till like 6 a.m. in the morning. Decent. What's your, what's your like, um, what's your coolest thing you ever invented sound-wise, sort of working with Jimmy? Is there anything, yeah. you know, where you're like, fuck, I did oh, that. Oh, I got a story for you. I thought you might. So, you know, I told you about the Beatles, right? Yes, I so do we asked, that. So we asked George Martin, George, how did you get that phasing sound for the Beatles? And he said, well, you know, chaps, you can look it up in the 1949 radio handbook from BBC. And we said, thanks, George. You know, Jesus, you know, that's not fair, you know. Yeah. So we went away and we figured out how to make it in stereo because they'd done it in mono. And then one day I said to Jimmy, Jimmy, check this out. I'm going to play you something. And I played him, Are You Experienced? You know that break in the middle where it goes, yes. and it all of a sudden explodes into phasing? Oh, axis. I'm, I'm, excuse me, on Axis. I knew what you meant. I already knew what you were talking about. You knew where I was going. Yes. It's, it's the years, you know, and all this stuff that Oh, you're do. allowed. You're allowed to. It doesn't matter. So, as that started, Jimmy's sitting on the couch behind me, and he hears us phasing for the first time, right? And he loses his mind. He falls off the couch, falls on the floor, and grabs his head in his hands going, Oh, my God! What's that? Ah! <laughs> Freaks out. Maybe he was high as a kite, was he? No, 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 he was stone cold sober, mate. And ah. then he said, play it again, play it again. So we played again. Ah! That was in my dream. I heard that in my dream. How did you get that sound? Uh, he says, man, I want that shit on everything. A true fucking story. <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, I, I can imagine the first time ever hearing phasing. You know, it would just blow your mind. Because it's not, there was nothing like that up to that point, really. It was, was it done in mono before that? It was done in mono. The Beatles did it in mono. We said, screw that, we're doing it in stereo. So it goes all the way across. And ends the record like that. Oh, yeah, I know exactly the part you're talking about. Axis Bold with Love. <laughs> Look at me, I'm still just like trembling here. Fantastic. Okay, so here's what I gotta ask you about. Here's what I gotta ask you about. I don't wanna blow this. I wanna, you know, ask good questions and now I'm fucking it up. So can I ask you a couple things about Woodstock? Yeah. J 
Just, I mean, I, how long? Were you there for the whole thing? I got there Friday morning at about 6 a.m. and I watched the sun come up over the hill. Yeah. And I'm looking down at this mess. And I'm saying, oh my God, look at all those people. Anyway, I make my way to the stage and uh, it's a mess. It, there's cranes overhead, there's construction still going on. I'm thinking, we gotta be recording at one o'clock today. There's no bloody way, mate. So anyway, I go to the back of the stage and I got my truck in the back there with my gear in, eight track, by the way. And um, <laughs> it's just, it was just an amazing sight. I stood out on the stage just as two o'clock was about to strike and there's a half a million people. And Bill Graham is standing next to me and he's, he looks, to, he looks out at the audience and he's standing, and he nudges me and says, Kramer, you know, if these people decide to riot, we're fucked. <laughs> so I said, thanks, Bill. I'm going back to my truck now. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, you don't want to piss off a half a million people. <laughs> no. A lot of which are, you know, doing drugs, obviously. Yeah, but they were so mellow. Yeah, everybody was chilled out. Chilled. At Woodstock, so you recorded the whole? The whole thing. The whole thing, so you recorded And the only the reason that I was able to stay up at night because they gave us vitamin B injections in the bum. Jesus, Murphy, I've had one of those. How it did does it feel? Get you, it does get you cranked but, but up. But it hurts, mate. It does hurt, you know, you're getting a needle in the arse, there's no, <laughs> no way around it, that's gonna hurt. <laughs> So you recorded the whole Woodstock. I mean, I've seen the, you know, obviously the documentary, the movie Woodstock, and it sounds fantastic, I might Thank add. You. So nice work on that. So you recorded Richie Havens, you recorded all that Everybody. stuff. Everybody. 10 years after, that's one of the best recordings of that song I've ever heard. That's so, unbelievable. And Jimmy didn't go on till? Monday morning, nine o'clock. Right. And it's mud city, you know, it's just, and half the people that left at that yeah, point. Yeah, you can see in the video, there's, yeah. you know, patches of people. But missing. he played magnificently. I mean, and, and yeah. the Star Spangled Banner for me is just, it's like a bomb went off, you know, it's heartrending and it's just so, it's Absolutely. perfection. Absolutely, you know? so did you, like, was that all rehearsed? Did you know he was gonna play the Star Spangled? Had you heard him do it before? Or? Many times I'd record him live doing it. So I knew it was gonna come you at some point. Coming, yeah, yeah, but, but this just, was a different event. This, this was special. This was really special. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it made the hair stand up on the back of your head, you know. You can't help but getting you know, oh, affected yeah, no, by it. Oh, that's, that's amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Can you imagine being on the stage with Hendrix at Woodstock? No, I can't. <laughs> I mean, I can imagine it, but you know, when I start imagining it, I start, yeah. getting, start getting crazy. Oh, okay. And I mean, if I was there, I probably would have ran out and waved, hey, everybody. <laughs> I probably would have did that. And you, and you wouldn't have gotten arrested this time. No, probably not. People would be like, what's wrong with that fella? Get him <laughs> off there. <laughs> so I'd like to ask you more about, uh, you know, obviously Jimmy, because he's, uh, he's the one you did. So you got into Electric Ladyland and Electric Lady Studios in New York, and what year did you move into there? We started building it in 1970. 1970? Yeah, well, we started in late 69, but we finished it in 70. Okay. It took a year to build, and a million dollars. Million bucks, that's pretty. That's a lot of money in 1970 dollars. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, today it'd be nothing to spend a million on a studio, but right. back then it'd be a lot. So what, what, what would you say, do you have, you don't have a favorite Jimi Hendrix song, obviously. I think I do. My favorite over the years has become, I think, Little Wing, because it's a fabulous ballad. It's oh, probably it's the, unreal, it's amazing. The, it's, the most, it's the prettiest ballad I think he wrote, and um, I've got a nice little story about it. Oh, okay, no. We're, we're yeah. sitting there at the Olympic Studios in 67, and you know, Jimmy starts noodling on this song, and it, we start recording it. We cut the track in a, probably about an hour. And then he's wandering around the studio and Olympic was this very grandiose big studio, 80 feet long by about 40 feet wide and 40 feet high. We could do symphony orchestras in there. And quite often the session on the night before, the day before, they left a whole pile of instruments in that hadn't been picked up yet. And there was this table with a whole bunch of percussion and stuff on it and sitting there was this little box. 
And Jimmy walked over and said to me, hey, what's, hey, hey man, what's this? I said, this is a glockenspiel. So I picked up the two mallets with the little brass rings on it and just hit it and it has this beautiful belt on it. He said, oh, that's cool. Let me see, let me see, let me see. And he, he figured out, within five minutes, he figured out how to play the glockenspiel, which is what you hear. Ding, ding, all those beautiful bells. That's Jimmy doing it. And he played it on the song, obviously. He overdubbed it, yeah. On Little Wing. See, now is that something, is that public knowledge or is that another one I just learned? You just learned it, man. Oh my God. Kill the song that we just should be playing, Little Wing. <laughs> Pretty damn good, I tell you. He's pretty damn good, isn't he? Cliffy. Listen, Eddie, I want to thank you for, for coming in and talking to me. My that pleasure. Was absolutely amazing. Thanks Cliffy, for having me on, brother. Thanks for thank you. doing that. This is probably the coolest episode of Guitar Lessons with Bubbles there'll ever be. Although I do have one, I'm going to do one, a David Bowie tribute coming up. Yeah. I'm going to do that soon. I got a David Bowie suit I'm going to put on. I did that song called Fame. For Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just that one, huh? That's, oh, just that one, yeah. That's fame, kinda... fame, 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 fame. Okay, here, I'm gonna hit you with a couple of rapid fire ones. Best kink story. Best kink story ever you got. Ray Davis is sitting there over there and he walks up and he comes over and he says, I gotta turn this amplifier on and I got the microphone right there and he, I didn't realize the amp was on full blast, and he hits his cord, and I jump six feet in the air, and I cussed him out something horrible. <laughs> Did you take a swing at him? Uh, he was bigger than me. <laughs> okay, yeah. You don't want to do that, then. Okay, so, Kink's uh, best Led Zeppelin story. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Gets it, embarrassing. Or one story that you can tell One on the story, game. oh, good grief. Anything? Uh, <laughs> Putting him on the spot here. No worries, what about the stones? Uh, equally so. No, actually, I got a, quite a couple of funny ones. Um, yes, a nice one for you. So we're recording a song called "Let's Spend the Night Together." <laughs> yeah, heard it. <laughs> and mix in the studio, and he can't get the bloody vocal. And all of a sudden, he looks over to the side door, and there's these two bloody great big English cops standing in the doorway. And, he's, and so I said to the main engineer, because I was a young pup then, young assistant engineer, Oi, the fuzz are here. Tell, tell Mick to cool it. So he has to talk about this. Mick, the fuzz behind you, just stall him. So he says, without missing a beat, Mick turns to the fuzz and says, Oi, come over here. And there's these two big cops there walking towards him like this. Boop, 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 boop. I'm having a problem with me headphones. Can you help me, please? And the next thing you know, there's one cop with one finger on one ear, one finger on the other, holding his <laughs> headphones on his head. And that's, that's how a he, true story. And true story, and that's how he recorded the track. With two two big in holding, his... holding his headphones on his head. I love it. That's fantastic. <laughs> that's in the book, by the way. It's called From the Other Side of the Glass. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Neither I'll can be, I. I'll be reading that. Well, get at it. Yes, sir. Yeah, no, I shouldn't be holding you up here. You're probably in the middle of writing your book. Yeah, I'm going to go. See you later. Bye. Okay, see you, Eddie. Thank Cheers. you very much. Thank you. Yeah, so you don't mention to me that you got fucking Eddie Kramer at your house? Well, it was a bit of a surprise. 
Okay, awesome. Well, listen, that was fantastic. Thank you. Thanks, man. Thank you. Clifton, Thank you. you know, look out for Clifton David Broadbridge. You know, get him on the Googler there. He plays all over the place. Go see his shows. This is Guitar Lessons with Bubbles. I gotta go fucking catch my breath now, because this was amazing. Thanks, brother. Unbelievable. <laughs> Guitar Lessons with Bubbles. So what the hell are we doing out here? It's freezing, for Christ's sake. I'm sakes. sorry, Eddie. I just got one question about one more question about Jimmy. Like when he smashed guitars, would he would like if he went like this? Was that sort of how he did it? Like that kind of a? Uh, yeah, maybe. But jeez, oh, oh. Can I just? Can you show me, get some lighter fluid and show me how he burned no, them? No, it's all freaking wrong! I'm just asking. Guitar lessons with bubbles.